all know that our clothes are made in third world countries because they're cheaper. However, we're much less aware of the fact that our medicines are also made in these countries. Once again, because they're cheaper. Zo'n doosje kost vroeger uh, rond 100 euro. En dat kost nu nog maar een euro gemiddeld. Production of medication in India is good for the country's economic development. India is looking for a development, but development at what cost and development for whom are the central questions. In the third world, people and the environment often pay a heavy price for these cheap medicines. They're preparing medicines over here and exporting to other countries and making large profits. In result, see, the people over here, they are getting sick. We are no river Musi. It smells very, very It bad. smells terrible here. Yeah. It's the most polluted place. The most polluted place? Yeah, yeah. And, that's and we have taken sample here also. You took several samples? Yeah. And what, what came out of it? Uh, the presence of uh, <coughs> antibiotics are there. Sorry? The presence of antibiotic medicines. Zembla investigates how sustainable our medicines are produced. Oh, man. So this is coming from the factories down there. Factories, and that is upstream. And they dump it in the river. Yeah. And you, where do you take the samples? I take the samples there, also. Yeah, it worked also on my eyes. The foam is then from the pollution. Yeah, pollution. The river Musi in India has been polluted by the pharmaceutical industry. Anil Dayakar, seen here reeling in disgust at the overwhelming stench, has found remnants of antibiotics and multi-resistant bacteria in numerous water samples. It stinks unbelievable. It slaat ook op je op je adem en maar ook op je ogen. Het is echt ongelooflijke stank. En dit komt dus allemaal van rivier. De, de fabrieken die daar zitten, die gooien dus allemaal die zooi hierin. En, en je, je ruikt gewoon. Zo'n waterval ziet er idyllisch uit, maar een stank. How did we get to India? The story begins at a pharmacy in the Netherlands. Three quarters of the pills in Dutch pharmacies are generic medicines. Generic medicines are drugs with expired patents. Upon expiration, expensive branded medicines can be produced by other manufacturers, at which point the price drops drastically. This is a mooi voorbeeld. Sinds de afgelopen 10 jaar is de prijzen van de geneesmiddelen gedaald en uh, vroeger waren ze was zo'n doosje 80 euro en uh, nu is dat een stuk goedkoper. Uh, dus dit kost dit kost zo'n zo doosje kost een euro. Hier hebben we een medicijn dat uh, nu dat was vroeger ook duur, duur medicijn was. Uh, uh, Levofloxacine is ook van patent af en dat is nu ook in waarde gedaald. Dat is nu nog maar 4 euro voor een doosje. En wat was dat vroeger? 50 euro ongeveer. Zo. En, en waar worden deze medicijnen dan gefabriceerd? Dat zou ik oprecht niet weten. Staat dat niet op de, op de bijsluiter? Kijk, wij zien, wij zien een, 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 een vergunningshouder die, in de, die het in Nederland... Uh, dat is in Baren. Staat in Baren, erbij? In Baren. Oh, dan moet je gaan zoeken in de bijsluiter. Dan kijk je bij fabrikant en dan vind je een, 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 een Nederland staat er bij. een Nederlandse vergunningshouder ja. Ja. en een fabrikant in, uh, in Malta. In Malta? Ja. Dus, dan, dus dan is het gefabriceerd in Malta? Nou, ik kan het me niet voorstellen, maar dat uh, suggereert dit wel, ja. Maar of ik dit zeker weet, ik, nee, dat kan ik niet met zekerheid zeggen. We want to examine where and how this box of antibiotics made by Aurobindo Pharma is produced. Dan gaan we zoeken uh, op de site van Aurobindo Internationaal. Daar staat uh, de, bij de International Subsidiary staat Malta wel genoemd. Maar je ziet hier ook staan Our Operations. Our Operations. Met India. Ja, daar zie je eigenlijk International en Indian. En wat Indian dan? Nou, als je op Indian klikt, dan uh, zie je alleen maar uh, lijkt het productiesites in India op in uh, Hyderabad. Daar moeten we het mee doen. Verder kunt u als apotheker ook niet zien waar, waar het gemaakt wordt dus. Um, nou ja. Dus is maar de vraag of het in India gemaakt wordt, of in, de, de maar dus niet in nee. Baren, nee. niet in Malta? Nee. nee, dat weten wij niet. This box of antibiotics is probably made in Hyderabad, a city in the central Indian province of Telangana, 
that is presenting itself as India's capital city of pharmaceuticals. Telangana state has a dominant position in the bulk drugs and pharmaceutical sector with nearly 200 bulk drug and intermediate manufacture units. 30% of the medicines exported to USA are made in Telangana. Hyderabad cluster has come to be recognized as the bulk drugs capital of India. Hyderabad Pharma City. Many of these pills cost next to nothing as their patents have expired. But how are they made? The four biggest Dutch manufacturers of generic drugs are Teva, Sando, Mylon, and Aurobindo. The Dutch patient information leaflet doesn't say where the drugs are manufactured, although the American leaflet of the same type of Aurobindo antibiotics clearly states where the medicine was made. Factory Unit 7, near Hyderabad. So that is our next destination. We are coming here to, to look for who's our window. Oh, yes. And this, this is produced here in Polypali. Poly Poly, yes. Poly Poly. Yes. Poly Poly. Unit, unit 7 from oh. our window. Ah, yes. That's seven. here. Uh, unit 7. Uh, unit 7. Okay. Seven okay, you can show us. Oh. Okay. This box of Aurobindo antibiotics is manufactured near here. However, the residents of Palipali have a story to tell before they take us to the factory. Do you do you know this company Aurobindo? Aurobindo Telsama? Telsu. Fifteen years ago, these people were forced to move here by the government. They are Dalit, the lowest class in the Indian caste system, also known as the untouchables. Mahatma Gandhi helped these people by allocating them land on which they could live and work. That is, until the Indian government decided to build pharmaceutical factories here. 270 families lost their land, although they were promised jobs in return. The residents of Palipali bring us to the Arabindo factory. This is this is Arabindo. Arabindo. Yeah. Everything is Arabindo. Yes. Okay. It's big. For 80 acres. How many acres? 80, 80. Okay. We can drive home, that's no problem. No problem. We'll go slowly. This is Arabindo Unit 7, where the box of Dutch antibiotics is produced. A report on the forced relocation of the residents of Pali Pali is partly funded by the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Professor Surapali is one of the authors of the report. They give land somewhere in the barren lands and the dry lands and the lands which are never used by anybody. And these people go and, you know, they struggle and they sweat and they, you know, all blood and sweat they pour. Suddenly the government takes and they are allotted somewhere. Is that also happened with Pali Pali? It happened with Pali Pali. For a poor and a rural person, land is not just an economic resource, right? It is an identity, it is a kind of self-respect thing. It is of, like if I have a big, huge bungalow, for them it is a half acre or a one acre land is a big asset for the lifetime. 
the residents lost their land, and the jobs they were promised never materialized. So who is working there? On our way to the factory, we see a patchwork quilt of corrugated iron houses. Uh, what is this? Yeah, they are settlers. They are settlers? Labor from other places. These are the people who got migrated uh, from other states of India in search of uh, work. Upon passing these houses, we notice a factory owned by Mylan, a manufacturer who also provides medicines for the Dutch market. These houses are for Mylan's employees. The migrants who work for Arobindo live behind the Arobindo factory. All of the employees are now at work, while a few women stay behind to look after the children. Two years. Two years already. And what do you do? Law play in Pakistan. Concrete, Matipani, Godalwani. And how much do you earn? Six thousand. Six thousand. Every month. And you live in this house? Milekada? With how many people do you live here? Low-cost migrant workers do get the jobs at pharmaceutical companies. Professor Prasad, a sociologist, has researched this situation. Every pharma company, every SEZ in India, you find actually, you know, the migrants and the outside labor who is recruited because outside labor is more docile. They are willing to work for longer hours their terms of uh, wages actually will be very, very lower than the local population. Where the village once stood, you now find Arobindo and many other pharmaceutical factories. The area is known as a special economic zone, which offers these companies a whole host of benefits in addition to free land. These special economic zones will give them full protection from the government. For everything, what do For you do? Everything. Company like Carbindo, any multinational companies, they want cheap labor, cheap land, free water, tax-free for some years. As a result, the factories in India can produce pharmaceuticals at lower costs, more than 30% cheaper than in Europe and America. This creates significant development opportunities in India. Government show us we are providing so many millions of jobs with these companies and foreign investment is coming for thousands and lakhs of crores of rupees. Exactly, so I mean they also give development, these multinational companies. They say development, but what we are asking, who are the people are developing? Whose development is that? Is it not a win-win situation then? It's not actually win-win. I would uh, certainly think that the people in the developing countries or the third world countries actually are being terribly, terribly exploited. I don't think any capital intense uh, corporate kind of development, poor people will benefit out of it. Especially in India, it won't come down to the untouchables and uh, tribals. Inequality has been, you know, hugely, hugely increasing in India. So it doesn't bring wealth. If you look at 1922 to 2014 data, they're saying that 
the rich actually has multiplied about 40 times while the poor actually have not even crossed actually two to three times over a large period of time. What kind of company is Aurobindo? Their online publicity video describes them as follows. Aurobindo began its illustrious journey three decades ago as an active pharmaceutical ingredient manufacturer and soon became renowned in the US and Europe markets with specialty generic formulations with supplies to over 150 countries. Aurobindo is a multi-billion dollar corporation that manufactures pills for almost every country in the world. This promotional video shows asthma tablets being packaged for the Dutch market. Every day, over 60,000 boxes of Aurobindo pharmaceuticals are sold in Dutch pharmacies. Aurobindo, committed to healthier life. However, the bigger picture is less rosy. For many years, Aurobindo's employees have been protesting in an attempt to improve pay and working conditions. Pairi Bhimu Varam Parishramika Pranthanlu Aravindo Factory Mundu Jarigna Dharna Himsatma Kanga Marindi Police Lakku Karmik Lakku Majja Garchana Lo Kondariki Gaya Lakku We talk to Aravindo's skilled employees. They ask to remain anonymous, afraid of losing their jobs. First thank you for the success of the success of the success. Five years ago, IT is a technical one. Five years ago, it's a permanent guest. It's not a permanent guest. Ten years. It's a permanent guest. And that is exactly what happens. In 2014, 1,500 Aurobindo employees are suspended for going on strike. The workers' pay is far less than the minimum wage and is not enough to meet even their most basic needs. How much do you get paid? Salary is 8,009. Contacts are sir. If you have an employee, you have to pay a minimum of 15,000. If you have a marriage, you have to pay a marriage. You have to pay a marriage. You have to pay a According to these employees, working conditions are also abysmal. In the past 10 years, at least eight employees have died in various accidents and many more have been injured. Corrective facilities, goggles, iron gloves, safety shoes. We have to say that we have to do this. 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 Aurobindo has 19 factories near Hyderabad. The cheap labor and land means our pharmaceuticals can be manufactured here for much less. Is this Aurobindo? Yeah, this is Aurobindo. Smell very badly. Very badly. <coughs> it's coming white into this car like this? Yeah. <coughs> All the workers must be having some respiratory problems, definitely. Because this smell is there every day? Yeah, every day and 24 hours. Not only the workers have to put up with the stench, the nearby residents suffer from it too. We visit a school located next to an Aurobindo factory. That I observed when I came from another place to here, first time, was the headaches. Second thing was a burning sensation in the eyes and in the throat. Okay. And uh, some kind of drowsiness, maybe. A little dull, you feel dull. And the teachers, but also the students. Yes. Students, when we then they stand in the assembly, they used to feel dizzy and some of them used to faint. They did faint sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. Really? Yes. Is there a difference between children at this school and children at other schools? Yes, there's a lot of difference. So these uh, children cannot run uh, due to this uh, lung power and due to this pollution over here. So they cannot breathe out. That means the pollution from the factory yeah, from your yeah, window yeah, next yeah, door? Yeah, yeah. Are you sure? So now you're smelling now? Yeah. Is little. it hot? But are you sure that's coming from the factory? Yes. 
from our neighbor, is from the factory. We have complained uh, in local newspapers. They had, they come, the press reporters, everybody came here, but uh, we could not uh, sort out this problem. So we have complained many times. Uh, even uh, uh, four years back, the district collector came here. He was uh, give these people that pollution will be stopped, but uh, nothing changed. Nothing changed. Definitely, they have to change. Some change is necessary. I won't say we have to accept, but we have no choice. They are preparing medicines over here and exporting to other countries and making large profits uh, that uh, in result, see, the people over here, they are getting sick, they cannot study, they cannot concentrate, they cannot play, they cannot eat food due to this pollution. As well as paying their employees low salaries, the factories seem to make little effort to comply with environmental laws. Air pollution goes unpunished, and contamination from industrial wastewater also has very few consequences for the factories, according to environmental expert Anil Dayakar, who has been taking samples of the wastewater for 15 years. And you wrote several reports? Yeah, we have several reports, and we contributed to all these reports. Anil Dayakar has also co-authored an article for the journal Infection, as well as contributing to various reports for British, Swedish, and Indian universities. But how do we know that it's coming from the factories? Yeah, we trace the water coming from the industry walls. And from there, it is coming directly to the open water bodies. And then you take samples, we or take what samples. do you do? Yeah, we take samples accordingly. This footage was shot in 2016. Upon request by the British organization Changing Markets, samples were taken of the industrial wastewater from an Arabindo factory. The area proved to be a hot spot of bacterial resistance. The samples contained a bacterium that is resistant to six types of antibiotics. The pollution from this Arobindo factory continued until as late as the end of 2017, according to the residents of Palapali. This is then the factory in Arabindo. The antibiotics of Arobindo we bought in the Netherlands is originally manufactured in this factory. Now, uh, number seven. Number seven? Yeah. It's here. Yeah. But but I don't see much pollution now. And they put Leland Nana? Leland, recently, two, uh, uh, two months back, is the uh, all farmers. Dana, could you put Dana? Farmers. Farmers, Valander Gachi Baga, just say. Malla, Malla, Melinda, I'm going to start this number. Everywhere we go, we see water tanks. The reason for this is that the groundwater is so polluted that clean water must be provided to both the factories and the people. In 2005, it was not like this. But as the years pass by, the problem is uh, it's becoming worse. The ma major reason is there is a lot of demand, the growing demand for these drugs and all over the world. As the production capacities are increased, so is the effluents and the resultant pollution. They are supposed to treat these industrial plants properly in the treatment plant, which they don't want to do. Why not? Because they want to save on the production cost. It's money. It's money only. This is this is Krishai Pali village. The groundwater in this village is completely contaminated because of the pollutants reaching the groundwater table. Okay. Can you please switch up? That's... Yeah, you can see the color totally yellow. It smells also a little bit. It gives drug smell only. It's if you go and smell, it's closely. You can, you can smell drugs. Did you take um, also ex samples here? Yeah, we took the sample from here also. And what came out of this? It's a presence of uh, bulk drugs. Bulk drugs as well? Yeah, antibiotics. Okay. But they could use it 10 or 15 years ago, there was normal drinking water? Yeah, it was normal drinking water. They're using it for all the purposes, even for drinking, air for agriculture, even for their cattle also. And now they cannot use it no, anymore? they're not using it anymore. Drinking water, can you use it? Yeah, they're buying it. Can they afford buying the water? They have to. There is no other go. Yeah, young time, no problem. Uh, two time problem totally polluted skin allergy 
टोटल स्कीन एलर्जी स्विमिंग वाटर दे अलग जो लेदो माफ़ लेदो ना टाइप तुम हम अपने लेट लो बत्तर में फिलहाल कुरोग आलू ये मांदल दे ये अंता मांदी कोड दिनी वासन दूसरे अलग दाग अलग नेला कोड बोल नेला कोड बोल फिलहाल जो चिंचिने फिलहाल रो फिलहाल कोड दाग ना दिसका पोल में According to the residents, the groundwater is now entirely unfit for use, as it contains antibiotic residues that are hazardous to the population. In the evening, we Skype with Professor Joachim Larsen, a renowned expert in the field of multi-resistant bacteria. For over 10 years, he and Anil Dayakar have studied the consequences of industrial wastewater on the people of Hyderabad. It's, it's uh, grown to become a bigger problem than what we realized uh, some 10 years ago. This pollution, what we see in Hyderabad, what Anil showed us, is this a local problem? The effects are both, I think, local and global. There's potential global effects if these antibiotics are uh, driving the evolution of, of resistance. When we expose uh, bacteria to lots of antibiotics, which happens when you discharge lots of antibiotics into the environment, they develop resistance. And environmental bacteria can sometimes transfer their resistance to pathogens, to those bacteria that cause disease in humans. And these bacteria can then travel around the world and become everyone's problem. The contamination creates an environment in which a multi-resistant bacteria, or superbug, could develop. And that will pose a danger to humans. That's why the United Nations are worried about the consequences of industrial wastewater disposal at Hyderabad. A drug that once protected our health is now in danger of very quietly destroying it. So that means that I could take them home with me from India? You will most likely carry resistant bacteria in your gut when you're returning home. You don't necessarily get sick, but you become a carrier. So if I carry it, I can transport it to other people in Holland? Yeah, that's how we spread resistant bacteria throughout the world. We travel. They, they come with us when we travel. So, this so it is, is a global... ...how we are interconnecting. And that's why everybody should be concerned about how antibiotic resistance is managed in all parts of the world, because we are also interconnected. So the production of this box of antibiotics creates wastewater that is harmful to humans. However, as proper treatment of wastewater costs money, the contaminated water is often disposed of illegally, according to Anil Dayakar. What is this place? This is called Kalji Pali Industrial Estate. Yeah. And this is the location where we collected samples for a Swedish study and India study, almost all the studies. Okay. And uh, in all these samples, we found uh, the traces of uh, antibiotics. It's a mix of antibiotics. And does that make then an, what they call a superbug? Yeah, it's called a superbug. It's multi-resistant? Yeah, multi-resistant uh, in this water. So if I fall down, then I do have a problem? Hopefully. Hopefully. And this water is coming from different, different industries which are uh, upstream. Okay. Almost uh, Arbindo, Mylan, Hetero, all major industries are there. It's, it's an illegal activity. It's but nobody, nobody reacts on nobody it? Nobody is scared. Even Pollution Control Board, they don't uh, acknowledge this fact. From here, the contaminated water flows further inland into a lake where it is causing huge problems. A shocking incident of water pollution chemical waste was emptied into a lake in Telangana, Sangareddy district. The toxic waste killed at least 20 lakh fish. The rotting bodies washed up on the banks of the lake. These are the visuals that we are getting to you. They are uh, shocking. We visit the lake and talk to the local fishermen who show us photos and videos of the aftermath. October, Muda Tarik Nadu, Worsham Radam Tony, Kaspella, Potaram, Gadakanunchi Matam, Chemical Ochi, Chapel Matunjani Penny, Arvindu, Esamitsu, Van Tetsu, and Kachala Padin the Campuli. A Campulu Valana, Ishapal, Chemical Dorama of the Chapel Janipin. Did you go to the police? Police 
కంపెనీలు మాత్రం నడుస్తూనే ఉన్నాయి కెమికల్ వస్తూనే ఉంది ఇంతవరకు ఏ కంపెనీ బంద్ అయ్యలేదు కెమికల్ బంద్ అయింది లేదు ఇవి వస్తున్నాయి వస్తున్నాయి అన్నారు కానీ ఇంతవరకు నష్టపరం అంటే ఎటువంటి నష్టపరం మాకు రాలేదు ఇంకా ఎవ్వరు ఒక రూపాయి ఇవ్వలేదు Two hundred and thirty thousand fish died. Over three hundred and fifty families lost their income. So, how do you make a living now? Life in Adara may be only for one or two cool days. Because there are no chemical factories. Akada ma local alone will be able to cook. If a guy de guy akada ekada ida cooli naali panje is going to be bad. A government body examined the water in the lake and concluded that it had been contaminated by the pharmaceutical industry. All companies were fined. Arabindo was fined 5000 rupees about 60 euros We visit the authority responsible for the supervision of the disposal of industrial wastewater I'm coming for the state pollution board it's here yes. Okay The Telangana State Pollution Control Board is responsible for combating environmental violations What are they doing about the air pollution the antibiotic contamination and the dead Hello. fish Are you from the State Pollution Board? I'm a journalist from Holland. Could I have an interview with uh, the member secretary? What time is not correct? I don't know. You don't know? Oh, okay. Do you know what time he will be there? I will know. I will tell you. Please. Okay, we'll take a seat. After a two-hour wait, we finally ask for the telephone number of Mr. Reddy. collusion between state and pharmaceutical agencies is so uh, you know a uh, uh, close that state actually is willing more than uh, willing to actually permit these pharma companies to get away without any of these regulations what is this this is jos van dongen i am a journalist from amsterdam from dutch television You are the secretary of the Pollution Control Board. Yeah, but I know them all. They go either every day. So, sorry. The person I have right now, I'm at a personal function. Can you call me later? Yes, I will call you later. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. He's in a sick house, said he. Companies are competing fiercely. and they uh, uh, they need to produce cheap to be able to sell and make profit and if the buyers at the end of the line don't ask for good pollution control they won't get it either at the end is down to money yeah it is down to money because the... treatment of pollution is costing money a normal uh, wages is costing money and at the end we as a consumers have to pay more yeah that is where they don't want to compromise on yeah no i agree it's uh... boils down to that uh, somebody needs to take responsibility of the additional costs that it takes to produce responsibly we then call the state pollution control board yet again however our calls are no longer being answered and we receive no response to our emails ik krijg er wel een beetje buikpijn van als ik dat zie ook wat ze vertellen. Hè, bijvoorbeeld we moeten zeven dagen werken. Uh, de vervuiling. Uh, ja, dat, dat geen, zijn geen fijne beelden. We visit the Dutch health insurer CZ. CZ policyholders receive Arobindo medicines. They have no choice regarding which drugs they are issued. Heb je dit nooit met Arobindo over duurzaam produceren gesproken? Nee, wij kopen in op prijs en uh, uh, we, we, we weten dat, dat weten we niet. Nee. Verandert er iets in jullie beleid? Voor 2019 willen we met iedereen waar we op dit punt zaken mee doen, uh, willen we een soort handtekening uh, van dat je netjes omgaat met mens, natuur, uh, omgeving. Ja, dus, dus naast de prijs zegt u, willen wij ook dat ja. de medicijnen duurzaam ja. geproduceerd worden. Nou ja, dat er goed wordt omgegaan inderdaad met de mensen die er werken, met de omgeving. We also approach other Dutch health insurers, such as VGZ, Silver and Kraus, and Menzies. They also include Arobindo medicines in their policies, but none of them are willing to grant us an interview. They say the findings should be reported to the government and Arobindo. Seven weeks before our program airs, we inform Arubindo of our findings and repeatedly ask them to respond. Laat een bericht achter na de toon. 
Dag, u spreekt met Jos van Dongen van het programma Zembla. We hadden toch graag een gesprek met u willen hebben over onze bevindingen in India. Once again, no response is given. Eventually, we receive a written response from Arobindo. Arobindo produces medicines in compliance with strict legal guidelines as applicable in India, the United States and Europe. The production units are certified and monitored by the supervisory authorities in these markets. Local and international labor legislation is complied with. Employee wages and benefits are in accordance with applicable legislation. All employees receive the same level of health and safety facilities. Arobindo has high standards with regard to environmental protection and complies with all required processes. The factories are equipped to prevent and neutralize any harmful industrial wastewater. Their lives are fragmented, their lives are shattered, families actually are broken, and this is where, you know, what pharma companies are actually contributing to the development of the local regions and communities in terms of outsourcing. It's a sad story, to be honest. Yeah, it is quite, uh, you know, quite sad. For more information, please visit our website, zembla.tv.